and a huge happy Thursday. It's Thursday, isn't it? I'm so used to being live with Timely on a Tuesday. This is our new slot and it's very, very exciting to be here at a totally different time. We hope to catch some of you on your well-needed lunch breaks today. Now, today we're doing things a little bit differently because these live calls are all about inspiring our gorgeous industry and the team at Timely. And I decided that they are, um, they are um, so inspiring and there's so many inspiring people out there that we wanna get chatting to. And so many of those actually walk among us. So today I'm welcoming the wonderful Lorna Roth, Roy, Roy Thorne du Ross, I can't speak today, to the stage to share her journey and story with us all. Now, Lorna is very much a friend of Salonology, having been part of our business communities for some time now, and is a new addition to the Timely community too. And Lorna's made some huge business decisions over the last year and really had no interest in a silly old lockdown, holding her back from making her dreams come true. Her can-do attitude and constant commitment to showing up has got her to where she is today and she's joining me to talk about her story and how magic played a special part in her new business RDR and Coco's. Welcome Lorna, lovely to have Hello. you here. Hey. <laughs> now let me oh. make sure see any comments uh, come and say hello to everybody um come and say hello to Lorna of course in the uh if you're in the audience in the comments today um and I'll chuck any questions that you might have to Lorna um you may have seen that we've been doing a little bit of uh, salon owner real life stories recently across different channels and it is just so inspiring because it really helps us to see what we can all achieve as salon owners uh, from somebody who's in the mix doing it with us um themselves so uh, Lorna very, very kindly agreed to come and join us today and share her story and her journey with us. So massive welcome, Lorna. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for letting me come and join you and do this. It's exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. And we hope to do more of these as well, because it's just a great opportunity for us to see what can be done when you really put your mind to something. Um, so let's start at the beginning, Lorna. Tell us how all this journey started for you. Um, so I was actually in university doing a nursing degree when I decided to, to delve into the beauty industry. And I was working a full-time job and doing placements and it was really difficult. So I thought, right, I need something that I can work around myself in uni. So I trained to do nails and started doing the mobile in York and worked alongside university. I didn't finish my degree. I had to take some time out for medical reasons and went to work in a salon during that year out and never looked back. And that was it. I just, we, oh well, I worked in a hairdresser's a mobile in York. And then a year or so into that, we thought, right, I'm not in uni anymore. Let's go home. And I said to my wife, now, now wife, then fiance, we can go home, but I'm going to open a salon if we do. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back and we're going to open a salon. And the opportunity to open in a hotel came about and it all just started from there. That's that's how I then grew and grew and grew. <laughs> where is home, Lorna? Tell us where home is. Um, so I'm in Abergelly in North Wales, um, where I'm a celebrity was just filmed. I can actually, like, if I showed you the window, you'd almost be able to see the castle. We're that close. <laughs> That's very cool. Did so, you get to meet any of the celebrities during your yeah. uh, during the time that they were in town? No. Yeah, in lockdown, so we we of couldn't. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I guess it was oh. no different from them being in where they were to if they were outside anyway. It's just they had to eat worse things. Um, so um, so you're in the hotel. Tell us a little bit more about that. How big was that business and how did you get started? So I was on my own there um, and absolutely loved it. So I remember actually the first day. So it's actually my, my friend's um, family business. So I remember the first day my dad, who I've grown up with, took me to this space and said, what do you think to this space? And I was like, yes, I'll have it. But it was so different to what, what we turned it into. And um, I opened up there, absolutely loved it. I had two beauty rooms. I used to have someone come in to do microblading and things like that. And I grew that to a good business. It, it sustained me. It wasn't massive. It wasn't huge. Um, but it was fine. It was great. And I, I did absolutely love it. But I couldn't also find where I sat in the industry. I was, I'm not, if you ask my friends, they'd be like, Lorna won't be a beauty therapist. Like she's the last person who would be a beauty therapist out of all of us. And I just didn't 
it, something I can't I couldn't put my finger on it at the time just didn't sit right with me mm-hmm. um and then I was like headhunted for another job um in the wedding industry and where I got married and I decided right this is an amazing opportunity run with it and I sold the hotel business at that time because it, it just wasn't wasn't right and went and did into weddings for a little bit instead nothing related to the beauty industry I was a wedding coordinator and um did that for a year or so I did it for two years in to- three years in total but for a year or so before I was like itchy feet for the something in the industry again <laughs> you say like it's nothing like the the industry it's not in what you're delivering but of course it is such an emotionally led industry isn't it where you have to really put your heart and soul into it and it is just I want to make this the most perfect experience for the bride or the client who walks through the door so it's still about that heart and soul isn't it so when you stepped away from the industry what did you miss most about it I think like you say I had the the people I had that side of it the connection with clients or the um other couples in, in the wedding industry I had that I think more than anything, I found myself, I really developed as a person and realised why I'd stepped away from the industry in the first place was that I wasn't confident enough in myself and my ability. So I built that confidence and thought the one thing I've always wanted to do was microblading. I was too scared to do it because I was too scared what people would think. I wasn't someone who would say no to people, but actually you need to. Um, And I learned all those skills during that time. So it it was it was more a personal growth thing than a I miss that, if that makes sense. It was just started to fit together. And I thought, right, it's time, time to go back and train in what you want which is microblading <laughs> so that prepared you a lot of that prepared you really for for where, where you've gone now and the journey that you've been on so how did the opportunity come up from where you decided to to leave the wedding industry and sort of dip your toe back into the beauty industry what was the first step of that for you so I the lady who used to come to do microblading at my salon was I was very friendly with her and she actually trains in microblading so I decided to train with her now at that point I had zero plans to leave the wedding industry I just wanted to fulfill something in myself um Mm -hmm. I had absolutely no plans of leaving trained and was doing that on my days off and then I started my IVF treatment to have my now little girl um and that took us on a journey because our first cycle didn't work and our second one did and it was when I had my baby that I thought the wedding industry I, I mean I loved that job and I loved the people I worked for very dearly um but it, it need that needed to be a life and actually I had this new little life that needed to be my life and I knew how flexible I could be in the industry if, if I was my boss my own boss yeah. so I went and decided right rather than go back to work I'll work for myself and opened up above a hair salon doing my mm. microblade amazing and was that sort of a did you just fall straight in love with microblading were you like this is the thing for me this is this that yeah. fulfills that feeling and and, and made you yeah. feel really excited now you're not still in that place now are you so you've moved yeah. the location and we actually had a chat about this the other day didn't we and there's quite a cool story behind this so tell us what happened to take you on that journey so my well I'll tell you a little secret well I've told you a little secret but I will share a little secret but the salon I'm now in my sister-in-law my lovely sister-in-law has been the manager here for for 11 years so the salon itself I knew of it it's in my hometown it's it's been here my whole life growing up you know I've always seen this beautiful salon here and about a year before this conversation even came about about me coming here um, and then buying the business I actually and I haven't even shared this with my sister-in-law never or the previous owner but um it's not a secret I actually put a picture of this salon on my um vision board because I I've loved this salon and hearing my sister-in-law's stories about how lovely it is and how lovely the clients are and, and like I say the fact it's in my hometown I did. I put it on my vision board a year before the conversation even came about. That's wasn't amazing. Even- this shows how powerful this is. I know a lot of people in our community are super open to that sort of visualization process and manifestation and actually yeah. really, really picturing what you want. And somewhere 
deeply you have made a decision haven't you this is where I want to go and this is what I want to do and and now you've made it happen so tell us about uh tell us about your salon tell us about what you've managed to create so far Oh, I just love it. I absolutely love it. So I have gone through the process of, of moving from the hair salon to now owning a salon with staff through the lockdown period. Um, and we decided when we weren't allowed to open last time, um, let's refurbish it. Like it's, I say we, I decided, but I was the one who was absolutely terrified. And I was like, I don't want to upset anybody. Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? And it was like, you're never going to, never going to be closed for four weeks again so you've got to like do it now and in the four weeks we did we completely refurbished and sort of put my stamp on it and, and made it my own and made it the new salon with the two businesses my previous business and the salon that was here before buying the two together and really brought a new sort of life to the place and I, I absolutely love it I could just sleep here like I just want to sit in it all day <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the yeah the transition because of course Lonnie, you've gone from working on your own to then working mm. with staff and having a team of people how have you found that process interesting so when I was a hotel when I worked at, as a wedding coordinator I was the hotel manager now that was fine managing staff there was absolutely fine because I was managing them for somebody else so I was kind of the middle person so you know, it, it, it was fine. That was like my job. I found this process really different, different to transition to. I was so lucky um, because my, I mean, my sister-in-law is self-employed here, so I'm not her boss, which is fabulous. Um, but she knew the business inside out. So she's been able to help me along the way, although we've had to have some fairly tough conversations along the way of that journey as well between the two of us. You know, we are like best friends. But yeah, the transition I found harder than I anticipated I thought I've managed people before it will be fine but I'd managed them for somebody else managing them for myself feels very different <laughs> yeah it's uh it's definitely a whole different ball game isn't it when the buck ends with you and you're the one who's got to make all those decisions and they know there's no one else that you can sort of blame and pass that on to but obviously it's been a, an exciting journey and, and you totally set your your sight this is what I want to achieve this is where I want to go um, now, actually, some time you're asking, what trend do you see for brows in 2021? Do you think full, fluffy, natural brows are here to stay? I do. And I think because I think a lot of people have got very used to not wearing makeup and things through lockdown. I yeah. think we're going to see lots of brow transformations. Or, and I mean lots. We, I've been inundated with messages and phone calls and everything for, for brows. At a rate that I've never been before, because I do think people are so used to not putting makeup on, and they've got used to their how they look without it, and they don't really want to go necessarily go back to having to sit and and put it all on. And summer's coming as well, so we always find it's it's busier in summer. But I do think natural brows are here to stay, hundred yep. percent. Excellent. Um, I wish I lived close to you, Lorna, because of course I'd be in and having, um, <laughs> having some appointments with you because I certainly want to get mine done, that's for sure. Um, now, of course, there's going to be a lot of people who watch this and think, you know, going from um, the middle of a pandemic, which, you know, the global pandemic, which affected us all economically as well, uh, a lot of businesses have closed. Uh, a lot of them have had to just sustain themselves. And of course, what you've done is absolutely leapt forward and made a really, really big step. Talk to us about that, because that's a big thing that you've done there. And I think a lot of people will be like, wow, that's a ballsy move. So um, how did you go about that? I knew, in that I was very happy in the hair salon, don't get me wrong, it was stunning. And I knew that I was gonna build there. So my goal was I'm gonna build here and then everything changed and it was fab. But I actually remember having a conversation with my nan and all of my family have their own businesses. So the family we have practical conversations it's not like how do you feel about that it's like right what's the business plan and she said to me do you think you're making a good decision being in a lockdown and I said I think it's the best time because businesses that survive it will thrive from it so yeah. actually I think if we weren't in a lockdown I don't think I'd have been as brave in making the decision I think I'd have stuck with the status quo and even though it's what I wanted I think I'd have maybe been a bit more cautious but I wasn't because it's now or never we were at that point you we were at the crossroads and you've got to choose you either go and make it happen or you don't like and that was the time so yes. I think the lockdown actually helped me to say yeah let's do it like 
go for it. We could, it, it, it couldn't get any worse, could it? It couldn't have got any worse. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. You saw an opportunity, you identified an opportunity and you just absolutely went for it. So if somebody was sort of sitting on the fence at the moment about maybe they've been looking at a business, they've been looking at training in something, they've been looking at making a big change, what would be your advice to them? Do it just do it don't look back don't don't get in stuck in your own head I think sometimes obviously you want to make sure that like financially if you're doing a training things like that that you can sustain it don't put yourself in any sort of difficult positions but don't be afraid to go for it don't let your emotion of fear hold Ooh. oh am I back, I'm back. Yes, back. I'm so, it was my phone ringing um, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't let your um, fear of doing something hold you back just yeah. go yeah yeah absolutely like, back and I I probably could have progressed my business that I ended up selling further had I thought no this is what I want to do but just go for it go for anything yeah absolutely and of course uh, another big step that you've made a big change you've made in the lockdown is you've taken your business online haven't you yeah. uh, with your software um, and of course you know we are on the timely timely platform today so I do want to mention that but whatever software you decide to go with um, how has that impacted your business would you say what 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 have you seen happen since really well really, I'm really scared to do it like really scared and I did face resistance along the way um, I think I was I was I was more worried about what clients and stuff would think so I didn't want anyone to feel they had to book online. The ladies that come to us and book four or five appointments ahead in person, they could still do that. Um, and I think I definitely made a bigger deal of that in my head than it was in real life. So I was like, no, I mean, yesterday I was stood downstairs and someone's booked in for a consultation on their set of eyebrows. I wouldn't have had that otherwise. I don't know who this person is and I don't know where they've come from. So I may not have got them had they had to pick up the phone and things. And, and you, I came across timely and online booking through yourself and that's yeah. things I could say a lot but I, I I was still like no 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 we're not going to do it we're okay but actually it's been 100% fine and on our first day open when clients got text reminders they were saying does this mean I can book online now I'm quite excited about this now we haven't opened everything up because we're not ready for that yet um just because we need to get our head around everything but the point is clients are more than happy with it and they're loving it and they know that they don't have to use it but they can and they love the text reminders and I don't know what I was scared of I have no idea what I was scared of do you feel that you've lost any control by having that open to your clients now no 100% not 100% not and actually so for me um so I'm the only person in the salon who does microblading so people contact me personally sometimes and I don't work every day um but or if someone phones the girls can send me the number and I can contact them back and have the conversation with them and I can still see the diary I don't have to say oh I'll, I'll phone you back when I'm in the salon it's much more professional I was terrified but actually it's been fab and no I don't feel any loss of control at all that's amazing. To go from where you, you started off, Lorna, where it was, you know, yourself, you say, above a hairdresser's just doing your treatments, to then, what, what's the time distance between the two, between you leaving there to being in your new salon and opening this week? Uh, six, six months, but we were in lockdown for all of them. <laughs> um, we had one month open, um, but actually the transition of finalising the business sale um, is happened not even a month ago so it's been a very sort of short period of time that first conversation was six months ago to now that first the business is 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 available was six months yeah amazing I mean you and I had a well, our community had multiple conversations didn't we leading up to this and and it was such an exciting thing to watch and um, and of course you know I had a salon I went through a sale of it and to watch other people sort of get back into that and build these incredible spaces and and transform them because you went straight in didn't you and uh, you decided within a couple of days that you wanted to make some changes to the to the yeah. place as well very yeah quickly. Yeah, <laughs> I think I knew in my head what I wanted to do. But again, I was scared. And it was listening to a, a salon owner's story with yourself and Ryan that someone else shared. 
you said, like, if you feel you need to put your stamp on the place, then do it. So yeah. it was a, a very quick shift once. And it was reflecting on myself as well, thinking you stopped yourself doing things before because you were scared. Don't do it to yourself again. And I'm so glad I didn't. I don't think my builder was glad when I said to him, I think we're going to do the next six months. And then I said to him, actually, you've got two weeks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it was good. You, it, you opened this week. So how's business looked like? What's it looked like for you since you reopened on Monday? How's that been? My cheeks are sore from all the smiling. And when I'm not here, I'm sat at home just looking at pictures on my phone because it's so lovely. Um, I just I just love being here and meet it for me I was very nervous because it's the first time I've met clients that had come to this salon before I was even on the scene so that was a bit of wrecking transition and um, they've all been absolutely lovely and amazing and it's been so nice to meet them all so I'm really excited to keep meeting them and then all my own clients have all come back with me as well so it's been nice it's like catching up with old friends it's yeah it's Hard not to hug everyone. That was the hardest thing I found is I just want to be like, hello, and hug. But I'm a hugger. Um, but we can't. <laughs> but it's such an emotional business. It's such a, um, it's such a, uh, we, we get so connected to our clients, don't we? We become part of their lives. We're there for some of the biggest things that happen to them. So it's only natural that when we get to see them again, it's going to be a bit of a reunion. Um, what did you find has been the best piece of advice you've had in your journey? Um, make time to work on your business. I think that would be my biggest thing. Reflecting back up to the very start when I was in the hotel, I noticed a drastic shift in my business when I started being the boss of the business, not just the therapist. And I was only on my own then. Um, but also now moving forward, that is in my head constantly. You've got other things that only I can do that will drive the business forward. So I need to make time to work on my business so what do Definitely. your working hours look like at the moment so I work a Wednesday a Thursday and a half day on a Saturday and that's me <laughs> that's balance though isn't it that's just balance and what about the um the worst piece of business advice you've ever received um don't do it like do, oh don't do that oh that's too big a leap start small start small no yeah if you know you can do it and I think the other thing is it depends who you ask so yeah. everyone has family and friends around them that are wonderful but if they are not in the industry or they don't have their own business or they don't know what they're talking about you're seeking advice from the wrong places because they don't get it so like I'm very lucky my family are business people so we have like what are you going to do? How are you going to cope? What are you going to do in the next three years, five years? What's the plan? But then other people will say, just start a bit smaller. Start where you are and then you can grow. If you know you can do it, do it. 100%. Yeah. And you're certainly somebody who just took the ball by the horns and absolutely went for it. What would you tell, uh, what would you tell newly qualified in Nails Lorna from five years ago? Be confident in yourself. Have confidence in yourself. It's that whole imposter syndrome thing, I think. Um, but I also think I needed to go on the journey I went on to learn that. So that's a hard one because I would say to myself, have your self-belief. Know your worth, know your value and know that you are the expert. Even when you're new, you're more of an expert than your client. So so have, have faith in yourself. But again, I do think I needed to go on the journey to learn that. I don't, it didn't come right away, but that is what I tell myself, definitely. We've obviously um, been with you on some of this journey as well, and it's just been a pleasure to watch because you're so full of energy and you're so, you're always showing up every time you show up, you know, you're there on your Facebook, you're there um, in our community meetings, you're there trying new things, listening, taking things on board and saying, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to give this a shot. And even when you're like, oh, I'm stressing about this, you go and you put yourself out of your comfort zone and you make it happen. And then you always come back with, I'm so pleased I did that because now everything <laughs> Amazing. So uh, what's the plans next, Lorna? Where are you? Where are we going to see you in five years? So, ooh, well, I've got a tiny little bit more of refurbing that I want to do, but that's like the next six months, not the next five years. For me, I would like to really grow um, 
grow some, some of our staff members, build up the columns for them. I'd like us to create a specialist skin clinic. And for me, I really want to inspire other young people. So I would like, on a personal note, I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to be an educator. Um, but I would really like to go and talk to young people and give them the belief in themselves that I wish someone had, had given me in myself. So that would be huge for me. And um, I want to I want to be here. I want to be here for the next 20 years is what I want. <laughs> I can honestly say, Lorna, I think you would be extremely inspirational to young people. I think you would definitely show them that they could 100 percent go and get whatever it was that they wanted. And you've got the story to prove it. What about uh, the future of the industry? What do you see happening to our sparkling, gorgeous industry over the next few years? Oh, that's a good one. I definitely see the more natural route can become people really wanting to look after their natural skin, their natural nails, their natural as really going down a more natural looking route. I don't mean in terms of like things, but just in general, um, I think that that skin and things like that are going to be quite huge. And also, I really think because of the year we've had, um, the more body treatments people are going to really give themselves some self care and some self love. I think people have learned a lot about slowing down. And I think that that will reflect in the treatments we offer. Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree with that more. We had um, Sophie from a, a spa in Melbourne who came on to us um, a few weeks ago and also Amy from Aromatherapy Associates. And they both said the same thing. You know, the trends are there. Those that have reopened um, in Australia are seeing this. In fact, we had somebody in the comments earlier who uh, she told us, uh, Chrissy, who's on the Gold Coast, she said, my business boomed here on the Gold Coast in Australia on the other side of our lockdown. And it's so fabulous to hear these other people who have then come out of this stronger, better. They've, they've maybe changed their offerings. They've changed their services to create something that's more in alignment with what people are going to be looking for, which is that real nurturing, more permanent features, you know, lashes being put on. And as you say, the brows and that sort of thing. Um, and we're able to amend our services. We're such a versatile, flexible industry, aren't that we? we can sort of change what we're doing, change our offerings to make sure that everybody comes in and has a wonderful experience. What would you say is your biggest lesson? that you've learned through lockdown what has that taught you Lorna? oh um learn to pivot like learn to to you have like i said i would would not have been open to online stuff and things like that so learn to pivot and again i'd go back to like don't be afraid don't stand in your own way just because and i think this is really important in our industry we say my clients wouldn't like that my clients wouldn't want that actually maybe it's because we've not offered it before so don't make the decisions for your clients based on where you're at now offer them where you want to be and I think people will be really surprised of, of, on people's reaction but I'd say that's been huge for me don't make the decisions for your clients you don't you don't know you think you do but you don't <laughs> I, I, that's such a good piece of advice and I think that's so true so many people um sort of say well one client said they'd never want to have that done or they'd never be interested in that and we then tar all the clients with that brush but also when we change our offering as well we attract a whole new plethora of clients through the door as well don't we and much like you've you've done with you've infused the microblading with a beauty salon it's going to cross over it's going to attract some clients that just want the beauty some that just want the microblading some that want both and it just helps you to grow and, and offer more to your community yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely it's been fabulous having you here today Lorna I'm sure the audience will agree what a wonderful inspiring journey you've been on and if anybody can say just go for it and just do it you really honestly truly can because you have taken the balls uh, taken the ball by the horns and just gone for it and just said this is it I'm going to make this happen and look where you are now sitting in your newly refurbished beautiful salon that you clearly love and clearly think is just so wonderful and you're so happy to be there and what a wonderful experience for a client to walk in your salon now and meet somebody who's so in love with their own business and so in love with delivering just amazing treatments it's just fabulous 
So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Lorna. Thank you for everybody in the audience who turned up to support me and Lorna today. Um, and um, we hope we brought you some inspiration today. And uh, thank you, Lorna, again for being here. And thank you, Timely, for letting us share Lorna's wonderful story. Um, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday day everybody we'll be back again next week uh, for more timely lives and uh have a wonderful wonderful few days ahead enjoy the sunshine everybody bye <laughs>